Hey hi everyone, Phil here. Today we're going to do two things. One is to look at the idea of a t-test for testing the significance of uh, individual coefficients. And the second thing is we're going to look at the interpretation of a t-test. Because while you might be able to crunch the numbers and come up with a conclusion for the t-test, it'd definitely be nice to have some understanding. Let's start off with the simple linear regression model. So that's dependent variable, explanatory variables, intercept, slope coefficients, that's the error term. Say we want to test that the slope coefficient equals some number, let's call that C. Doesn't matter if it's two-tailed, one-tailed here, I'm going to do two-tailed. Then you know that the formula for the t-test is as follows. Estimate of the coefficient minus the hypothesis value divided by the standard error. You know that if we're using the critical value approach, if this test statistic exceeds the critical value and absolute value, then we reject the null. So when are we going to reject the null? We're going to reject the null roughly when this number is big, and we're not going to reject the null when it's small. Now, let's start the story by supposing that the null is true. So suppose that theta is equal to c, this number c, I think of a number, Think of a number, 10, 11, whatever you like. Right, we estimate this guy. Now, if the estimate is, has desirable properties, and we're let's going to suppose that it does have good properties, then the estimate, would you agree, should be close to value C. So let's just pick uh, C is actually, all right, 12. Then would you think that the estimate of beta would be close to 12 or far from 12? I hope you answered that it should be close to 12. If it's close to 12, let's look at the, new, the, the top here of this, uh, then this difference should be a close to zero. And let's forget about this because this is just a num just uh, something to make it work. So the crucial bit is here, we're looking at a discrepancy between your estimate and the hypothesized value. If that difference is small, it means that the null is true. Uh, we're still thinking C is 12. Suppose your estimate comes back to be like 30. Well, remember the estimate should be closer to the true value, so the true value in that case should be closer to 30 than 12 if you, you know, if you think about what we've been saying. And that means in that case that this difference will be big now. How big is big? That's when, guys, you need the look up the critical values in the table of the T distribution because supposing the null is true, were true, then this statistic will be distributed as t distribution. And that's why we use the t table. All right, so the rough idea I've just given you um, is of how it works is just from the numerator. Now, where does the standard error come in? Well, this uh, standard error then in the formula, that means the difference here will take into account the variability of our estimate could think about it that way. So if the difference between the estimate and the hypothesis value is big after accounting for the variability of the estimate, then we reject the null. Next we're moving on to interpretation. We now know we can use the t-test to test the whether a coefficient is equal to a particular value, c. The question is, why do we, why is it, what's this so special about picking c to be zero? Because the t-test for this is in computer output, it's in your exercises, that you have to do by hand and we've solved a few, it's in your exam papers. So what's special about testing that the slope coefficient is equal to zero? And why is it when you're doing these questions you, you rarely get questions that says test the significance of the intercept? Okay well let's look at what would it mean if beta, in this case in the simple linear regression model, is zero. Well, it means, if that was zero, let's place that beta by zero, then what can you tell me about the relationship between the exponential variable and the dependent variable? Think about plot. This is form of straight line, this bit, and that's just the error. So say you've got some dots like that, then this is some line, and uh, would you agree that passes goes through the 
intercept alpha and it's got a slope of beta. What would it mean to say if that beta is zero? I hope you think say that well that means the line is horizontal. It means that whatever x remember how you read off a graph whatever value of x you give me y is the same. I get the same y for every single x. In other words y doesn't depend on x. Compare it to this where beta is not zero. In this case beta is bigger than zero for the red line. And if we read off for that lower x I get that y. If I go up to higher x I get a different y. So y changes with x in a positive way in that when x increases y increases when beta is bigger than zero. Think back to correlation. So if y doesn't depend on x in, in this linear way, we say there's no correlation. In other words, the null hypothesis in the simple linear regression guys of slope being zero is the same as saying there is no linear relationship between x and y. You could say alternatively that, and it means the same thing, that there's no correlation between x and y. And so in regression, that's why this test is so important and by default that's what computer outputs generate when you run regression is because you know when you're running regression whether you're trying to use it for uh, cause and effect type relation you want to see the impact of uh, x on the y that'll be gone that'll be explained through beta or use for prediction of x on y you need to know like if this coefficient the true coefficient is zero if it is it means that this x doesn't need to be in the model. One thing to say, if beta is zero, the slope coefficient is zero, we could say there's no correlation. That means, remember, correlation means there's no linear relationship. It doesn't mean there is no relationship at all between x and y. Some relationship between x and y could be nonlinear. For example, uh, you might get something like this. This is suppose nonlinear, x and y, it's a curve, right? that's different to what we're modeling here. Now let's do interpretation for the multiple linear regression model. Let's take two exponential variables. There is a slight difference to the interpretation in this case when one of the slope parameters is zero. And if you're listening, uh, Yu Lin, this answers your question. Just say I'm not ignoring you. You're asking me the explanation between a simple linear regression mo model and a multiple linear regression model. Well, here's, here's one difference I'm going to explain. Let's take beta 1, the slope coefficient. There's two slope coefficients. Suppose it were true that beta 1 is 0. First of all, note that this case is not a straight line relationship between x1 and x2 because this is not a formula of a straight line. It's a formula of formula of some plane. Okay. If this were true, it means that controlling for the other exponential variables, in this case x2, there's no linear relationship between x1 and the uh, dependent variable. Another way to say it probably sounds very similar, there's no linear relationship between x1 and y after adjusting for controlling for x2. In jargon, and you might have also heard it, that we can say there is no partial correlation between x1 and y. The word partial here is telling telling you that you're controlling for other exponential variables. Finally, why don't we bother, although it's given computer output, to test this, that the intercept is zero. So we're building a linear, reg this regression model, we're trying to kind of connect the x's to y. The intercept, there's no x, it doesn't help to exp no, there's no x to it here. It doesn't tell us the relationship between some exponential variable and dependent variable. And at the end of the day, that's what we're after, so we don't really need it. And that's the way it is. Okay, guys, so that's it. Like, share, comment, see you on the next one.